for something that I can do. It looks like I'm, you know, busy with a computer. And then I was focusing so hard on trying to look busy that I actually finally saw the problem and now I've solved it. I'm like, my light comes. It's taken me three weeks. So what I do is I use telescopes on the ground and in space to study dead stars. Uh, they explode and then things happen, interesting things happen. Uh, the, the initial explosion will cause something called a supernova remnant and you can study that with optical light, like the kind of light that I see or the kind of light that Hubble would see. Um, they'll have these beautiful colors. Um, due to all the different elements that have been built up over the lifetime of the star. So basically, the inside of the star comes out. What's even more thrilling is that we are now fully in an era of multi-messenger astronomy. And this has to do with the fact that in 2015, we detected the first gravitational waves that were predicted 99 years before that by Albert Einstein. And so we now have a way to see things or detect things or know about things in the universe, even if they don't emit any light. I've been very lucky. I come from quite a middle class background, despite what people would think when they see me. They're like, oh, it's a black person from South Africa who grew up initially under apartheid. Both my parents are home owning university graduates. Um, so not not the typical African um, sort of idea that people have in their head. And with my parents being able to give me that support and being able to give me that kind of insight into being uh, what it is to go to university. And they didn't even go to university like I did. They didn't go straight off to school. They did it part time while working, paying a mortgage and raising kids and all of that kind of stuff. So but I still had that experience of people go to university, this is normal. And increasingly, I started to realize in my studies that not everyone has that experience. So there's this change happening, uh, but the underlying tenets of academia, of academia is not suitable or not suitable for the top level diversity and inclusion and equity and women in science and all that kind of stuff. At its base, those two things are in opposition, mm -hmm. and it's small things that need to change. You know, issues that we have, not all, but a lot of the problems that we have in society, a lot of, you know, that we're like, we need to find the next Einstein, and that person is out there somewhere, but someone told them that people like you don't do science, or you can't be a doctor. They just said that once when they were nine years old, and then that was it, and then they never cured ovarian cancer. Having 30, three zero first cousins teaches you communication skills, teaches you bargaining and negotiation, um, it teaches you responsibility. Working with different kinds of people, so you have to be, you have to know your place as a child, but you also have to know that there's responsibilities on you, and all that kind of thing is familiar to me when I step into large academic environments. I'm just like, yep. Yeah. And it's taken me a long time to kind of put all the bits and pieces together, but. And love the research so much. <laughs>